Good morning, Fellowship. I'm Madison. And I'm Layla. And welcome to Ship Talk. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and share. And to get us ready for Easter Sunday, Layla and I have an Easter trivia. All right, our first question of the day. According to scripture, who arrived first on Easter Sunday at Jesus' grave? Does anybody know? If you answer Mary, you are correct. Question number two. According to scripture, who was the first person to see Jesus after he was resurrected? The answer is Mary Magdalene. Which disciple went to where Jesus was buried to look for him? Does anybody know? If you answer Peter, you are correct once again. And the last question is, where did the angel tell the woman to go and see the risen savior? Galilee is correct. Well, as you know, it is Easter Sunday, and this Easter Sunday is completely run by the youth. We have an Easter skit coming up, and we also have our Lit Nation Choir. We even have a Lit Nation Youth Media Ministry running things behind the scenes. But first, Mark Antley Jr. is coming with you with Ministry Highlights. Good morning, Fellowship. I'm Mark Antley Jr. with your ministry highlights. The food bank will be open from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on tomorrow, April 10th. Perishable and non-perishable items will be available to all Houston County residents. All you need is your ID and proof of Houston County residency. Our Royal Ambassadors, a ministry for boys ages 4 to 17, will have their next meeting on April 19th. The theme for the month of April will be He Has Risen, talking about the resurrection and how it applies to our lives. There will also be a study hall. Male tutors are needed. If you would like to volunteer, email royalambassadors at fbbchome.org. The FBBC Athletic Ministry presents a Bicycle Safety Rodeo on April 29th, 2023, from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. in the east parking lot of the Faith Dome. Expect refreshments and giveaways. Bring your bicycle, helmet, and kids, bring your safety pads. There is a $5 registration fee to attend, so visit fbbchome.org slash events to register. Our men in black ministry are planning a men's retreat in the form of a cruise to Nassau, Bahamas. On October 9th through October 13th, the men and their wives will enjoy a moment of relaxation and rejuvenation as they cruise to the Bahamas via Carnival Cruise Line. The total cost is $450 per person, which includes the cruise and round trip transportation via Trans South Motor Coach. The deposit of $150 plus a separate transportation deposit of $25 is due on tomorrow, April 10th. To register, contact travel agent Shanto Woods at 478-919-7799 or email emailtravel00 at gmail.com. Ladies, prepare for our Women of Worth Derby event on Saturday, May 20th at 11 a.m. at the Anderson Conference Center, located at 5171 Eisenhower Parkway, Suite D in Macon, Georgia. Ladies, we invite you to come out in your Kentucky Derby attire. Our guest speaker will be Rebecca Ashford. Tickets are only $35. Be sure to register by visiting our events page on fbbchome.org for more information, or if you're interested in being a vendor, Email women at fbbchome.org. Also, ladies, get ready for denim, bling, and pearls. Friday, April 28th at 7 p.m. 
Last year's event was amazing, and this year is going to be even better because this year we are going to have an all-male panel. This event is free, but we're encouraging you to register the first 100 registrants who receive a VIP ticket to happy hour. Register at our events page on fbbchome.org. And finally, the athletic ministry invites you to enjoy a night of church days trivia on May 6th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the FBBC gym. The athletic ministry will test your knowledge on the Bible, classic church sayings, hymns, and those gospel songs that every churchgoer should know. For more information, email athletics at fbbchome.org. Well, that's all we have for this week. But for more information on these and other events, visit our website at fbbchome.org. Or follow us on social media so you can always know what's happening here at the ship. Or if you would like to have information sent directly to your phone, text the keyword CONNECT to 478-249. 5426. Again, I'm Mark Antley Jr. Have a great week and enjoy today's Easter celebration. Please stand. Please stand. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for waking us up this morning to enjoy this beautiful day. I thank you for my family, friends, and Fellowship Bible Baptist Church. Please watch over us and keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Bless Pastor Morgan and his family and everybody here. Please bless the Vachel viewers as well. God, I really, really thank you for dying on the cross and raising from the dead three days later. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Wow. Wow. Would you do me a favor? Would you do me a favor? Now that we've spoken to the Lord, find at least three people around you. Say hello to them this morning. Speak to everybody around you. Speak to everybody around you. Come on, speak to everybody around you. Love you, man. That's my jacket. <laughs> Amen. Those are in the balcony, but you greet each other in the name of the Lord. Greet somebody you haven't had a chance to speak to. Amen. Amen. Bless you, boy. Good to see you, man. Amen, amen, amen. Would you remain standing? On Friday night, if you were here, we closed the service in darkness because Friday the earth was dark. Jesus Christ had taken his last breath. The Bible says that after he had spoken that last word, he gave up the ghosts but he had put his spirit into the hands of God. All day yesterday was silent Saturday. We heard no word from Jesus Christ. But early, this morning, they went to the grave and found nobody. The angels were there to give the report that he is not here, he is risen from the dead. I need a church that loves Jesus to celebrate the resurrection. Come on, church. Come on, church, come on. If you're glad you're here and you're glad he got up, for the next 30 seconds, praise him like you grab. 
And our Lord rose from the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all hope has now been restored in my life. Clap your hands and give him praise, everybody. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the Lord's church. We are blessed this morning, church, to begin our worship by dedicating not one, not two, but three. Three babies this morning. And uh, I want to ask the families, well, not all, not all y'all, because there's not too much space up here for all y'all. Uh, the family of Kalani Bivens, the family of, I hope I get this name right, Yahara Velez, was it close? I was close. You, you come correct me when I when you come up. <laughs> and the family of Richie Harris the third. Good morning, how are you? Yahira. This is Yahira Velez. Girl, you cute and you look serious all at the same time. Good Lord. I'm gonna step over here for a second. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. There we go. There we go. There we go. Amen. Is this Richie? Hey, bud, how you doing? <laughs> he don't want to have nothing to do with me today. Amen. Somebody give God praise for these families. Amen. Amen. Let me just uh, say to you, um, let me get a cordless. Somebody hand me a cordless mic while they're doing that. Let me just say to you families, this moment we share together along with this congregation is a time where we're asking God to cover these children and to protect them until the time they grow up to confess the Lord Jesus Christ for themselves. This is not them getting saved. This is us dedicating them to the Lord and we're going to believe him that he will cover them keep them uh, through that time. Let me just ask, give the names of mom and dad. Carries Watson. Uh, Dante Bivens. Rhonda Nevada. Angel Velez. Stephanie Jackson. Richie Harris. All right, all right, awesome, awesome. I, I'm so thankful to have this opportunity to share uh, with you and uh, we want to ask the Lord to cover uh, these children. God has blessed you with children. The Bible says that children are a heritage of the Lord. And life is given because he decides for it to be given. And we appreciate him and glorify him for his grace. Let's pray. Lord, you're the giver of life sustainer of life, maintainer of life. And it's because of you, these three individuals are here in time and they're only here in time because you gave them purpose in eternity. And so we thank you for blessing us to share time and space with new purposes in the earth. We thank you that they are here and healthy and are new gifts to their families. We thank you for these mothers, <clears throat> mothers and fathers whom you've used to get them here in the earth. I pray that you would bless every family now. Meet every need in these families. 
meet every need of these parents, that they may meet the needs of these children. I ask God that you will cause these children to come to know their purpose in life, early in life. I ask God that you will cause them to come to know you and have a personal relationship with you early in life. Let them seek you early. Make your presence known to them early. Thank you for the lives that are going to be impacted by their lives. Thank you for their witness. And we give you glory and honor. We are standing here because of your grace and your favor. And we give you glory for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we dedicate this beautiful girl to you. We thank you for Kalani Bibbins and would you cover her and keep her in your care. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for Yahara Velez. We pray you keep her as we dedicate her to you. We pray your blessings on her life. In Jesus' name, amen. That baby's speaking in tongues already. See, we get creative. That's what we do. <laughs> Lord, we pray your covering now on this family as they hold their son. Hold him in your care. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. These certificates are given to Kalani Bivens, Yahara Velez, and Richie Harris III that indicate today we consecrated them to the Lord and dedicated them to the Lord on this ninth day of April 2023 here at the Fellowship Bible Baptist Church. We pray again that the Lord will go with you and that the Lord will keep you and your family for the glory of God. Church, give God praise for these families. And they return to the saints and they return to the saints. chocolate bunny. It's going to be the first thing I eat when I get home. Well, you better be getting your legs ready. Legs ready for what? The Easter egg hunt. I'm going to get the most eggs, of course. I don't think so. Hey, girl. Hey, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. Anyways, what are you guys talking about? 
Oh, we're just talking about how excited about Easter. Oh, really? That's great. What is your favorite part of the Easter story? My favorite part is where I get the biggest chocolate bunny. My favorite part is where I beat Amy in the Easter egg hunt. Those aren't in the Easter story. Well, the real one. The real Easter story? Who wrote it? Probably some old guy who doesn't like eggs or candy. OMG, you guys. The Easter story is written in the Bible. Haven't you heard about Jesus coming to save the world? Like Superman? Wonder Woman's better. Wait, you're telling me that you never heard about Jesus dying for our sins? No. You haven't heard about Jesus going to Calvary? Mm-mm. To save a wretch like you and me? No, but that sounds like love. That is love. Exactly. They hung him high and stretched him wide. Look, I can go on and on about what Jesus did for us on Calvary, but I'm going to let the song preach for itself. Everybody, get on your feet and join in. Come on, fellowship. Yeah. Every man falls down. Everyone needs grace. Your love is enough now. By your name we're saved. Look beyond our wrong. Saw just what we need. We are alive now. By your name we're free. You got up, swept it up again. Now we're up again with you. You got up, swept it up again. You got up, swept it up again. Thank you. 
We're so thankful that God has blessed us to have some of the most gifted young people in middle Georgia. Can you give God praise for our Lit Nation youth ministry? Come on, thank God for them. Hallelujah. Under the leadership of Minister Darius Duncan and his team that have given awesome leadership to our young people. And that was the debut of our youth choir, y'all. So let's give God praise for that. Amen, 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 amen. You may be seated in the Lord's church. What a joy it is for us to gather on this Easter Sunday, 2023. And uh, we're thankful to the Lord for his grace and goodness in our lives. If today is your very first time, if today is your very first time of worshiping here at Fellowship, y'all turn the lights on so we can see these people. Uh, would you be willing to stand? Would you be willing to stand? This is your first time worshiping here. First time. First time. Look around, church. Come on, celebrate these that are standing for the first time. Hey, fellowship, greet them. Say hello to them. Make them feel wonderful. Make them feel comfortable. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for choosing this church as your place of worship on this Easter Sunday. We respect the fact that you could have chosen so many other options. So we give God glory that you chose this church and you stopped by the ship at least one time on your way to heaven. Amen. 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 For those of you that are worshiping uh, with us online in the virtual space we pray that this worship has already blessed you in the spirit of christ would you be willing to identify yourself and uh, we have greeters online to greet you in the love of jesus christ we say good morning also to the wonderful members of our church who are worshiping virtually as well uh, not only in warner robbins but all across the country our e-crew members and those that are worshiping with us overseas it is a joy for us to be here today in the spirit of Christ. Clap your hands if you're happy to be alive. If you're happy to be alive. Hallelujah. 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 Well, there are a couple things I want to bring to your attention, church, and we'll move right into the word of the Lord. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank God for all of you who were here this past Friday night. Yeah, yeah. Wow, is all I can say. What a mighty move of God we had in this place Friday night as we celebrated Good Friday in the seven last words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise God for all of the pastors and churches that shared with us uh, this past Friday night. Amen. 
We thank God for them. And uh, we pray that you were blessed as our hearts were set uh, to see Jesus Christ uh, on the cross and to be here today to celebrate his resurrection in the spirit of Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask my wife to come now. She has a quick appeal uh, that we want to make uh, with regard uh, to our Women of Worth event that's coming up soon. And uh, if you'll give your attention to her. Say amen for the First Lady, y'all. Good morning. Good morning, Fellowship. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. To God be the glory for all the things that he is doing um, and will do in Jesus' name. So really quick, ladies, I want to personally invite you all to our Kentucky, our Kentucky Derby. Our Kentucky Derby is going to be held at the Anderson Conference Center in Macon on May the 20th of 2023. We have First Lady Evangelist Rebecca Ashford, who's going to be bringing the word to us on that, uh, that day. It is from 11 until 2 o'clock. Tickets are on sale now. You missed the early bird special, but now the tickets still are only $35. You're going to get an awesome breakfast brunch, and we're going to have a wonderful fellowship come in your Kentucky Derby best with your fascinator hats, ladies. Come on now. Okay. It'll be an awesome luncheon for us, and we just asking all ladies to come and be a part of this awesome event. Again, that's going to be May the 20th of 2023 from 11 until 2 at the Anderson Memorial Conference Center in Macon, Georgia. You can go to our website, fbbchome.org. There is a link under events and purchase your tickets or register. We have other churches bringing their women and we don't want guests to come and it's a fellowship wow event. Amen. We have other churches buying 50 tickets, more than that. So we want to show up in big numbers. We don't want other churches to outdo us. Amen. And it's the women of worth. Come on, ladies. I need to see your faces in the building. Let me hear the ladies say, hey. Love y'all. Amen. Amen. Ladies, if you will respond accordingly and uh, be a part of, plan to be a part of our Kentucky Derby, it's going to be a blessed, blessed time of fellowship uh, with the women of worth. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we are excited uh, because we are baptizing today. And uh, amen. And we have the honorable privilege of baptizing 32 people today. Somebody give God praise for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. In light of all that we do in ministry, in light of all that we do uh, for worship, that's what still matters that souls are still coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We can do better than that. Come on, clap your hands for that. This uh, week, our hearts uh, were uh, all over the place as, as we were trying to navigate through assignments of ministry for this Passion Week. But also, ladies and gentlemen, since the last time uh, we gathered together, one of our own has been called uh, from labor to reward. Uh, some 17 years ago, Pastor Willie Reed hired this wonderful woman uh, to serve uh, in administration, and she has been the longest standing employee of our church for the last 17 years. This week, uh, the Lord transitioned her out of time into eternity. And she is in the person of our own Janine Fambro. Amen. Amen. And church, uh, of those 17 years, she served with me all eight of the years that I have served as pastor. And she was intentional about this church. She was intentional about um, her service to her pastor. She was intentional about her service to the people of God. And um, I stand boldly to tell you in eight years of her serving this church, 
I never once heard anything negative about this wonderful woman of God. Never once. Never once. This week the Lord called her home and uh, I want you to know, uh, I want to thank all of you who have uh, called to check on myself, the staff. Uh, we're a work family. Yeah, we're a work family. We work closely together and uh, this has been emotional for us this week. And for many of you who have encountered her throughout the course of her time here, she well represented this church in business. She well represented this church in business. And um, uh, many of you may not know, but she is also the wife of a pastor, uh, Pastor William Fambro. Uh, he pastors in Fort Valley, pastors the All Things Are Possible um, church there. So we're talking about a pastor's wife, a woman of God, a servant in the Lord's church. And um, this week, we're going to celebrate her life. Um, her wake is going to be on Tuesday. You may have already seen it on social media, but we want to bring it to everybody's attention. Her wake is going to be on Tuesday uh, from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. at the Hicks and Sons Mortuary in Macon. Uh, if you need that information, it's already available and posted on all of our social media on Facebook and um, uh, uh, Instagram. Um, but her celebration of life, her homegoing service, will be this coming Wednesday, uh, April the 12th, right here at our church uh, at 11 a.m. I am asking if you have no commitment that you uh, can't break. Um, I understand, but if you can, let's be here uh, to support our own and to support the Fambro family and to support all things are possible. This is their first lady that has made her transition. And uh, we want to minister to that family and we want to be here. Uh, so again, on behalf of myself and the leadership of this church, we want to make sure um, that we are here to celebrate this servant of the Lord. And uh, I think it's only appropriate church that we would treat her just as we would anybody else. When anybody makes their transition in this church, we celebrate and we salute our service. So let's stand and thank God for the service and for the life of Janine Fambro. Come on. Come on. Let's stand and thank God. To Pastor Fambro, and the All Things Are Possible Church family, we send you our love, both spiritually and literally. Uh, if you're watching today, strength to you today, sir, and to your family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for the word of the Lord. I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the gospel that has been recorded by Luke. Luke chapter number 24. And I want to read this context for you in its entirety. Um, we've got about 20 something verses to read. I figure since some of y'all only come on Easter, we'll give you to read the Bible a little bit. <laughs> you will say it when you left fellowship, I read the Bible today. <laughs> amen, amen. Luke chapter 24. Of course, I will not attempt to preach all of this, but I do want to read it uh, for your familiarity and that it will serve as a basis uh, for your understanding of this little Easter speech today. Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse number 13. 
Your Bible should read, and behold, two of them went that same day to the village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened, and it came to pass that what they communed together, that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of conversations, communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Are you only a stranger in Jerusalem and have not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulcher. And when they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. But him they did not see. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew near unto the village where they went. And he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him saying, abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. I want to snatch our subject out of verse uh, number 19. And he said unto them, what things? I want to tag this text, what things? You may be seated in the Lord's church. The most convincing truth of anybody's testimony is to see them after their tragedy. When you tell your testimony, the power of your testimony is not just its truth but it's timing because by virtue of testimony itself you have already come through a test and God has seen fit to bring you on the other side of the test and therefore it is not just what you report about the test it is what you reveal about yourself subsequent to the test. 
because the most convincing evidence of the testimony is how you look after the tragedy. Such as the discipline discovered in the discourse of Luke chapter 24 in which Luke singularly records this moment in one of Christ's post-resurrection appearances this moment in time where these two disciples are leaving Jerusalem from the feast of the Passover heading back to this small village called Emmaus which is approximately seven miles on the other side of Jerusalem and the Bible says that while they walked they had discourse, what the text calls, they communed and reasoned together of the events that had transpired in Jerusalem that weekend. It's Sunday morning. They have seen a lot that has actually potentially traumatized them. They have seen a Jewish carpenter be subject to capital punishment because of his claims of being the son of God and king of the Jews. They had some degree of convincing faith and confidence in him. They saw his life be one of the miraculous and then they saw him die like a criminal. And they're trying to resolve how he lived with how he died. And the Bible says they communed together and reasoned. That word communed in the Greek text is this word homileo where we get our word homiletics. They were actually walking together trying to convince each other of convincing arguments to try to make sense out of what they had seen and heard. They were trying to develop a homiletic to the horrendous tragedy that had happened to Jesus Christ. They communed and reasoned together. It wasn't making sense. They were trying to make it make sense. And as they tried to make it make sense, the text says, this stranger came upon them and asked them this alarming question. The question was, what are you talking about that's making you so sad? He says, what manner of communications are these that you're having as you walk and are sad? We didn't know the mood of these two disciples until the stranger stepped up and disclosed to us not just their message but their mood. Text says they were sad. His real question is what are you talking about that's making you so sad? And I want to suggest that oftentimes when we see these questions, we're often immediately alarmed, if you've got a real Bible, that the question is in red print, which gives some indication into the identity of the person doing the interrogation. If it's red print, it's Jesus talking. You and I know from reading it that this stranger is Jesus. And he asks them, what are you talking about that has made you so sad? Well, if we know it's Jesus, he has no need to ask a question. Because he is omniscient. He is God in a body. And one who knows all never has a need to ask a question. He's not an all thinking God. He's an all-knowing God. He doesn't have to rationalize. He doesn't have to work it out. He just knows. 
and because he just knows he already knows the answer to his own questions and therefore whenever Jesus asks a question he's not asking a question for an answer he's asking a question for attention He's trying to bring some attention to some specific matter, which therefore suggests to us that when Jesus asks a question, the answer is in the question. If you probe the question, there are some things there that you and I need to look at that result in their dejection and their despondency. The first thing that is a problem that is tucked away in the question is their dialogue. What are you talking about that has made you so sad? Apparently you're sad because of what you're talking about. Your dialogue is contributing to your despondency, but also your direction is contributing to your despondency. Because that morning in Jerusalem, the resurrection had happened and you're walking away from the celebration. You missed all that, so let me try it again. Your direction is going in the opposite way in which it should. Because if you were in Jerusalem, you would not be sad you would have something to rejoice about but because you've been walking in the opposite direction of the celebration now it contributes to your depression your dialogue is why you're sad your direction is why you're sad but also your disposition is why you're sad because you are not only sad by yourself you got sad company text says they are sad I don't know who I'm preaching to but you gotta watch who you open your spirit to because your company can contribute to your mood I can't get no help here you ever wondered why you mad and don't know why it's cause whoever you hanging with is mad evil stuck up you ever wonder why you have a depressed spirit? Check your company. You got some depressed friends and sometimes you have to defend your mood from your friend. It's your dialogue and your direction and your disposition that has contributed to your dejection and your despondency. Talk to Olin Morgan. Might I tell you that maybe the first thing you got to do this Easter is check who you're walking with. Because they got you going in the wrong direction with the wrong mood, having the wrong type of discourse and conversation when you really should be walking in the opposite direction. When Jesus asks a question, the answer is in the question. You are despondent because of your disposition, your direction, and your discourse. Might I suggest to you, but there's a bigger problem there. The bigger problem that this text screams at us is that the reason why you got to be careful of your dialogue, your direction, and your disposition because they have the potential to desensitize you from his presence. When he spoke, it should have solved their problem. You missed all that. Because if they were his disciples, they should have known his voice. You don't know how to get happy. But their dispositions and their direction and their dialogue has desensitized them to the power and presence of his voice. So you got to be careful who you open your spirit to and who you walk with and what you're talking about. Because people that are in your circle possess the power to desensitize you to the presence of God 
and what you miserable about is a miracle happening right in your face but because you've been desensitized by vain conversation a miracle can be happening right in your face and you miss it because you got the wrong company somehow ladies and gentlemen we got to accept the fact that who you're talking to, who you're running with, and what you're talking about impacts your sensitivity to divine activity around you. The stuff you struggling with is walking right with you in your face, but because your mood is jacked up by people who got despondent spirits, you miss the miracle right in your face. Would you tap somebody and tell them, neighbor, life is too serious for me to miss God's activity in my life. Life is too serious for me to miss him walking right beside me. Life is too serious for me to miss his voice right there. And sometimes you got to tell people, I don't have time for your foolishness. I don't have time for the mess you trying to talk. I don't have time for where you trying to go because God is moving around me and I don't want to miss him fooling around with you. You got to watch now. You got to watch. You've been desensitized to the presence of God because who you've let in your spirit. I'm going to prove it to you. Some of you haven't even been able to respond to that word because of who you're sitting next to. They started talking to you, getting your attention on stuff that ain't got nothing to do with this sermon. Child, did you see so and so? Do you know the devil works through your friends? Do you know the devil works through your family? Talk to somebody and tell them God got a word for me and I don't want to miss him fooling around with your mess. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Because the folk you walking with can make you miss the miracle that is right in your face. They should have known his voice. He's talked long enough for them to know his voice. And here is the argument, ladies and gentlemen. This is a problem because they've been desensitized to the voice of God. And they look at him, watch this, like he's the problem. They ask him, you ain't been around here lately? You must have just moved here from Pluto. Did you, did you hear about the scandal? They, 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 they hung up a man who they found innocent. Lord have mercy today. This was the greatest injustice of all time. They found the evidence and the evidence says from legal documents that this man was not guilty of the crimes. All of those who could have testified against him walked away. And the people voted to exchange him for Barabbas. Let the guilty go and let the innocent hang in the space of the guilty by democratic vote it's always interesting to me church how we seem to not be able to come together until it's time to come against God talk in here Tolan Moore we can get together for sin we can get together against God we can get together for unrighteousness when it's time to come against God Yeah, yeah. Take Barabbas down and put Jesus up there. You haven't heard where you've been all this time. 
you must have just got here. And Jesus <laughs> says, what things are you talking about? I'm going to try this one more time. He said, what communications are you having that has made you sad? They said, you haven't heard about Jesus of Nazareth? Um, and all that they've done to him at Golgotha? Something strange happens here. God intervened, y'all. It's in verse number, between verse 16 and 17. He says, and their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Y'all see that verse? They were not blind. They were made not to see him. That word hold it in the Greek text means to be restrained or be retained or be withheld. The verse literally says that by divine intervention, God withheld their sight so that they would not see him or recognize him. Can I, I asked the Lord, why would you do that? That doesn't make sense. Because why would you raise up Jesus, bring him within physical proximity of them, and then not allow them to see him? It's no point of raising him if don't nobody see him. Because if you got resurrection and have not seen him, that's an easy way to invalidate the resurrection. And the Lord said I had to take his sight because I'm getting ready to train them on how to walk by my voice without seeing my presence. I can't get no help here. It's a New Testament practice, ladies and gentlemen, that oftentimes reign God has to suspend your sight in order to hone your hearing. Uh-huh. See, when you, when some of y'all don't know how to hear from God because you're waiting on God to move when God has already spoke. And when God has already spoke, that's a sign that he is alive. If I hear your voice, that's evidence enough that you can't be dead. Okay, y'all still missed it. Uh, if you get a call from somebody that Pastor Morgan was in a car accident and you don't know if he survived it or not, that's answered when I pick up my phone and call you. I can't get no help here. And as long as you hear my voice, you know that the tragedy has not killed me. I wish I had about a hundred of y'all. I'll make number 101 that will tell the devil I still got my voice. And as long as I got my voice, the tragedy has not taken me out. I'm training you on how to conduct your movements by my voice. Lord have mercy today. Cause if you see me, you're not walking by faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. For we walk by faith and not by sight. What you hear ought to dictate your movements. I'm putting them in training to teach them how to walk according to hearing my voice. The problem is they've been desensitized to his voice because of their dialogue, their direction, and their disposition. And here's the problem, y'all. Here's the blessing, y'all. If you miss this, you've missed the sermon. Y'all ready? God knows how to find you on the wrong road. God knows how to find you 
when you going in the wrong direction with the wrong people having the wrong discussion he got enough grace and love for you that when you're going in the direction away from him he'll find you ladies and gentlemen let me mess with your theology and tell you you didn't find the Lord the Lord found you you and he wasn't the one lost you was the one lost amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found blind but now I see Thank God. He'll find you in the club. Thank God. He'll find you when you're driving in the wrong direction. Thank God. He'll find you in the hospital when the doctors don't know what to do. Thank God. He'll find you going where you have no business going. And why are you looking for him? He found you. Lord have mercy to God. And even when you're struggling to resolve him, he's going to stick with you. Here is the antithesis of this context. It's here in verses 19 through 24. Tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't talk to me during this part. This is important. <laughs> They said, hey man, where you been? You don't know what's going on around here? Jesus says, what things? <laughs> they begin to give this lengthy answer between verses 19 through 24. What things? He said, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, um, whom the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be crucified. He was a prophet, mighty in word and deed, and we trusted that he would be the one that would redeem Israel. Yet the women that was with us, they went to the sepulcher this morning and uh, said that the stone had been rolled away. They saw a vision of angels. There was no body there. And some of the guys that were with us, particularly Peter, went and the text says in verse 24, it was exactly as the women said. Catch it, church. Watch this. Jesus says, what things? They said, concerning Jesus. I'm going to try it one more time. Jesus says, what things? They said, the things concerning Jesus. I'm going to try it one more time. Come on. Jesus said, what things you talking about? He said, the stuff concerning Jesus, we, we thought he was a prophet and he thought he was going to redeem us. If y'all got a Bible and can read it, y'all got a Bible? When they responded to Jesus, they talked in the past tense about him and he played dumb to people who were still stuck in his past I'm going to try it one more time for the slow people right there I'm in my resurrected life and you can't get with my resurrection because you still stuck on the crucifixion and I'm not going to let you pull me back into what God done brought me out of. Ladies and gentlemen, I have moved on to the mansion of my future while you living in the apartment of my past. So you get to stay there. But I'm moving on to bigger and better and sometimes you can got to play dumb to people who want to keep you in your past. What things? And 
the strategy of his question was to reveal to reveal them listen to what they said he was a prophet <laughs> uh, we trusted in him they condemned him and crucified him come here they first said he was a prophet which discloses DeAndre that they had a reduced perspective on Jesus cause he wasn't just a prophet he was the prophecy that all the prophets prophesied about he wasn't just a prophet he was the one that called the prophet he wasn't just a prophet ladies and gentlemen he was God and the son of God and God the son at the same time now I know why you struggling with me tell your neighbor don't talk this is your point I know why y'all struggling with Jesus cause Jesus' reality is bigger than your familiarity and you got some folk in your life that don't know how to handle you because you too big for their little framework. Tap somebody and tell them, neighbor, I'm not going to let anybody shrink me down to their little framework when the truth is you can't handle how big I really am. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. And you're struggling with the fact I'm bigger than who you want me to be. I just told on about three of your friends because their friendship is defined by how they shrink you tap your name and tell them Tolan Morgan is preaching it here today you better not let people make you uncomfortable because you bigger than how they see you the truth of the matter is you better live in all that God made you to be and if they fall off to hell with them you got to be everything that God made you to be tap somebody and tell them neighbor I'm going to be big like the Lord made me to be Because my reality exceeds your familiarity. You should probably write that down. That's sweet. Wait a minute. They said he a prophet. They got a reduced view of a big Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They said he's not only a prophet, y'all. They said we trusted that he was going to redeem Israel. We trusted he was going to redeem Israel. That word redeem in the Greek means to buy back. But for them, it wasn't soteriological. It was political. They said we wanted him to redeem Israel. Because when he preached about the kingdom, they presumed that he was talking about a geographical kingdom. And therefore, he would be the Messiah that would liberate them from Roman control. So they presumed that when he was their redeemer, they associated that to mean he's going to set us free from social political oppression. That's not soteriological, that's political. They weren't going to redeem us by salvation. They wanted to redeem us as a people. Oh, I know your problem now. I know what your problem is. You struggling with me because you put expectations on me that I didn't tell you. And now you mad because I didn't meet your self-imposed selfish expectations. 
Come in, ladies and gentlemen, let me upset you. People don't disappoint you. Your expectations of them do. I knew you weren't going to say nothing because you got a little attitude. Because you thought everybody was supposed to do what you expected them to do. And when they fell short of your expectation that you imposed, now you got a problem. They're mad with Jesus because they put expectations on him that was never true. You got to watch people who get mad at you and don't know why they, you, they mad at you. Because you really mad. Because my reality doesn't fit your convenience. Because you put expectations on me that fits your convenience. Because that's what you need. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you that when you are walking in the purposes of God, you cannot allow people to make their relative def definition of you based on what they want you to be. They've got a relative view of Jesus and a reduced view of Jesus. And here is the conundrum of the whole matter. Y'all ready? They still got the right view of Jesus. Because verse 20 says, they crucified him. That's correct. Verse 22 through 24 says, the women came. And the report of the women was found to be true. Which means, Lenine, that these two disciples knew the truth about Jesus and chose to make the truth a lie. Lord have mercy. Y'all missed all that. See, people who have a misconception of you is not based on them knowing a lie. It's based on them knowing the truth. They just don't want to accept the truth. You don't know how to get happy, so I'll shout myself. Can I tell you why people don't want to accept the truth about you? Because the truth about you is going to force them to change. And they would rather accept a lie because the lie will let them be comfortable in their own self-deception. But when you tell the truth and accept the truth, God will have to change the folk around you. Okay, y'all ain't getting happy. That's why some people haven't accepted the fact that you saved, sanctified, filled with God's spirit. Because when you start really walking in the power of God, it changes the folk who are connected around you. They didn't want to accept the truth about Jesus because it was going to force them to change. So they said, man, what the women said is true. But we're not accepting it. Because if they would have accepted it, watch this, y'all, they would have turned around immediately and headed back in the direction of the resurrection. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but the Lord's word to you today is that you got to walk in who God made you to be. Oh, by the way, and stop trying to make people accept who God made you to be and let who God made you to be change them. They said, nah, we're still struggling with it uh, because we, 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 uh, we found out the real problem. We found out the real problem, y'all. It's in verse 20, 24, 25, 26. Here's the real problem. Reigns, here's the real problem. The real problem, Jesus said, is that you are slow to believe. He called them fools. That's about as close as we're going to get to biblical profanity. 
He said, oh fools and slow to believe all that the prophets have said. He says, your real problem is not me. Your real problem is your own internal disbelief. Because you prove that disbelief is not a lack of evidence, it's a lack of conviction. We got the report of the angels. We got an empty grave. We got the report of the women. We got the report of Peter that had gone to the sepulcher. And you're still walking in the opposite direction. So it's not due to a lack of evidence. It's due to a lack of conviction. So I can't start with your head. I got to start with your heart. Because the real issue is you got a heart condition that won't let you accept Jesus in his truth. And here's the contradiction. Here's the contradiction, John Jackson. They said that Jesus was a prophet. Jesus turned around in verse 25 and said, you don't believe what the prophets say. You missed all that. The joke of the text is, you believe in the prophet, but you won't believe the prophecy of the prophet. Again, the issue ain't me, the issue is you. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I'm not the one crazy, you see me crazy. Uh, watch what God does. Jesus was genius. Jesus said the issue here is a heart issue. So I got to start with your heart. He says, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? In other words, you don't have a problem struggling with my suffering. You can't accept that I'm in my glory. Oh, have mercy. Because you forgot that my suffering is what got me to my glory. Lord have mercy today. You forgot that the very thing that you have dissed me about is the very process that God has assigned to my life. And that cross that you cut me off about is the very thing that got me to my crown. I'm not preaching to about 50 of y'all. I make number 51. That when people cut you off because of what you're going through, they don't know God's hand is in your process. And that's the very thing that's going to get you to your glory. He said, listen, it was all part of the process. It was designed to get me to where I am right now. You struggled with my process, but it didn't stop my purpose. I have entered into my glory. And let me show you that God agrees with where I am. The Bible says Jesus, who was the master theologian, began to cite every passage in the Old Testament that pointed to him. The Bible says he began with Moses and expounded on all the scriptures. Y'all missed all that. That word expounded literally means to conduct a hermeneutic. It literally means he conducted systematic theology to go from Genesis and Exodus all the way to Malachi and point every scripture that pointed to Jesus Christ. He said every, every scripture y'all ever read was talking about me. Every prophecy you ever read was pointing at me. And therefore to preach and not mention me is to be guilty of theological malpractice. Might I submit to you ladies and gentlemen, I'll remind you that there are no cliches here. It's only the gospel. Because if you can get a car and drive it and not give God praise to the God who gave it to you, you still going to hell. If you can get a job from the God who gave it to you and never give your life to the person who gave it to you. You own your way to hell. But the good news is he hung one Friday for six hours and died until death died. And Sunday morning, ah, he got up. And that's the gospel.
He said, let me give you the word. Because that whole Bible was talking about me. And look what happened. While they started, while Jesus was conducting this systematic theology of the whole Old Testament, something was happening inside of those disciples. I'm done. Something was happening. The Bible says there was an internal combustion. And while the word was being preached by the preacher who is the word, something happened inside of them. You know what happened to them? Every time you stand on your feet when the word of God is given, that's what was happening to them. Every time you lift your hands, the word is like a fire. Lord, have mercy. Shut up in my bones. If you respond properly to the word, you can't sit there like you chilling. Something ought to be burned on the inside that gives you joy unspeakable and full of glory. Do I got any help in this room? Y'all missed it. They said, we have burning hearts. While he spoke to us, by the way. Good night, church. I bid y'all farewell. But when this text started, in verse 13, they had broken hearts. By the time we get to verse 25 through 31, he preached the word and they had believing hearts hearts but by the time we get to verse 31 and 32 they got burning y'all must don't like the Bible right here cause this whole story was designed to show that Jesus wasn't the one dead were the ones dead and life showed up on the road to Emmaus Emmaus, to resurrect the living dead see if you really got joy off the resurrection it ought to bring you alive you ought not to talk about the resurrection and still be dead in your own spirit they were the ones dead the whole time Good night. This is the close of the sermon. This is the close of the sermon. I told you at the beginning of the sermon that the most convincing truth of your testimony is seeing you after your tragedy. Y'all got it by? HB, how do we prove that Jesus was actually there. Here it is. The text says Jesus was getting ready to keep moving. They invited Jesus to stick around and stay. It was getting dark. It's dangerous to walk out there for seven miles because now you're subject to robbers and wild beasts. They said, Jesus, don't do that. Hang out with us. Jesus comes in the house. The Bible says he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to the disciples. You missed all of that. I'm going to try it one more time. He comes in the house. He takes bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat all of it. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, this was not communion because there was no wine present. It was just bread there. This was not the sacrament. This was a cultural act because in Jewish families, only the master of the house could take bread and bless it and give it to his family. Y'all missed it. When Jesus showed up, he was a visiting stranger that turned into an invited guest that turned into the master of the house. 
And here's the proof we know it was him. If he took bread and blessed it, that means his hand showed. And when he took it and blessed it, they were able to see the nail prints in his hand. Tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I know he's alive. Because I done seen his hand move in my house. Every time I look around in the house, his hand is moving. Tap somebody and tell them, neighbor, we got to rejoice now. Because you were looking for him at the grave. I'm telling you, he's at my house. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Is it anybody here thankful that when you got home you saw God's hand move in your house because he was feeding you and blessing you right there in your house time you got sick he touched your body in the house every time you got hungry he fed you in the house he answered your prayer when you said father give us our daily bread he answered your prayer when you had bills do but you didn't have enough money to pay it you saw God's hand move in your house tap somebody and tell them neighbor which hand was it they didn't get happy tell them neighbor which hand was it it was that same hand that took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed thousands of people it was that same hand that touched the casket of the widow woman's son and he got up during the funeral it was that same hand that laid hands on the eyes of a blind man and that after Jesus has spit on him he was able to see it was that same hand that walked in Jairus house and looked at his daughter and said to Lita Kuma which means daughter arise and the Bible says he took her by the hand and lifted her up it was that same hand that stretched out out this past Friday and said Father into thy hands I commend my spirit and it's gonna be that same hand that touched your body this morning and woke you up with some strength and with a good mind which hand was it it was that same hand that stood on resurrection ground and declared all power in heaven and in earth is in my hand anybody here glad that you got your life in his hand tap somebody and tell them neighbor I said tap somebody and tell them neighbor I lay my hand on you in the name of Jesus rise and live in the name of Jesus get up out of your death and walk in the power of the living Christ anybody glad that you saw his hand in your house now that's 
why you came to church. You ain't just praising him for what he's doing here, but you're praising him for what he did at the house. Anybody glad that his hand is moving at your house? The blood is covering your house, your children got his hand on it, your marriage got God's hand on it, your money got God's hand on it, now I need everybody that ain't a shame, open your mouth if you ain't too bougie on this Easter Sunday morning and give him praise. I said, give him glory. I said, give him glory. Ask somebody, why are you praising him? Because I saw his hand in my house. Every time I look around, yeah, he keep moving. Lord, I done got happy here. Tell somebody, neighbor. Tell somebody, neighbor. I said, tell somebody, neighbor. Now you got to get your preacher voice on. Neighbor. 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 I got some reasons why you ought to give him glory. Because one Friday, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. I've been waiting all morning to say this. And for me, he died. But I Give him glory, cause you feel something burning on the inside. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he alright? I said, ain't he alright? Tell somebody and tell them neighbor. If you woke up this morning, give him praise. of y'all that's not a shame to tell somebody I feel something burning on the inside and I'm not gonna be quiet I'm gonna open my mouth
I gotta quit. But the Bible says that when they felt the fire burning, they headed back to Jerusalem to go tell the good news. Which means when the fire was burning, y'all, they headed back in the right direction. They headed back in the right direction. And it was a direction of peace. I'm not talking to everybody, but I want to talk to 50 of y'all who after today, God has turned you back in the right direction. Because he wasn't the one dead. You were dead. But now you alive and got your joy. And if you got your joy, you don't know how to be quiet. You don't know how to sit down. You don't know how to stay still because the fire has sent you in the right direction. On my way to my seat, I need 20 of y'all to give God a praise that you about to head in the right direction. Your hands are giving glory, everybody.
Everybody lift your hands in this place. The Holy Ghost is here to bless you. I need everybody to speak to God now. Put a praise on your lips. Put a worship on your lips. Thank him. Come on. Come on. Everybody. 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 The glory of God is in this place. I don't want us to miss this fresh wind. This is how worship ought to be on Easter Sunday. We bless him for his outpouring. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. God inhabits the praises of his people. God inhabits the glory that we give him. You came with a broken heart. You're going to leave with a burning heart. His power is here to bless you. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. We embrace you. We embrace you. We embrace you. Somebody's being healed right now. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Somebody's being healed. Not just in your body, but in your emotions. Your heart was been broken, but you're being healed tonight now. When you think he's not with you, he's walking right beside you. When you don't know he's there, God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When you think you're alone, God is right there. When you can't see him, he sees you. Woo! That's good news. That's good news. That's good news. <laughs> I'm not rushing the Holy Ghost because I believe God is blessing somebody. I believe you getting what you need right now. I believe it. I believe it. I believe you're getting what you need. Yes, Lord. While the glory of the Lord is in this place, I'm convinced somebody here, I don't know your name, I don't know where you're from, I don't know your history, but it's time for your past to become the past tense. It's time for you to walk in resurrected life. Uh-huh. It's time for you to stop letting people keep you in the apartment of your past. 
you got to move to the mansion of your future. And you got to do it with Jesus Christ. Come on. I'm talking to you, sir. I'm talking to you, ma'am. That says today is my day to give my life to Jesus Christ. And I want to do it now. I don't want to wait. I don't want to delay. I want to do it right now. If I'm talking to you, sir, I'm talking to you, ma'am. Your question to me is, Pastor, I'm ready to give my life to Jesus Christ. What must I do? My sister is already moving. She's already coming. She's already coming. What must I do to be saved? Number one, you must be willing to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You've got to be willing to honor him with your life and live your life his way. Number two, you've got to be willing to believe by faith that Jesus Christ died for your sins. That his blood was shed to wash your sins away and to restore you back unto God the Father. Number three, you've got to be willing to believe by faith that after being dead for three days, God raised him from the dead. And when it becomes our time and turn, we will have the same experience when the Lord shall return. If you're willing to believe those three things in your heart and confess that out of your mouth, today, right now, is your turn to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. My sister has already moved who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Move out of your seat now. Just meet me right here. Bring your smartphone with you. Wherever you are, in the balcony, we'll wait on you. On the lower level, come on. This is your time and your day to give your life to Jesus Christ. You want to become a member of this church? You want Christ to be your God? You want this to be the place where your family goes and grows in God. Come on. I'm waiting on you. Come on. Who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to be a part of this fellowship. I want my life to be growing here. I see people moving from the balcony. Who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me? I see them coming, church. I see them coming. I need somebody to start praising God.
I believe it's not it I don't know your name but the Holy Ghost is dealing with your heart right now and all you need to do is respond affirmatively let me tell you these who have already come up here I'm not going to interrogate you I'm not going to call you out I'm not going to check you we're going to celebrate you we're going to celebrate you I believe it's some more people here that says, Pastor, it's me. I've been out of church over 90 days or, I, or I've never confessed Christ. I know I need to. I know this is the right thing to do. They still coming from the balcony, church. Somebody thank God. I know this is the right thing to do. And there's no better day to do it than right now. Can I tell you, next Sunday is not promised to you. I don't know if you got time to church shop. I don't know. I don't know if you got time to try to figure it out. All I'm going to tell you is, Jesus will take you just as you are. You don't have to figure it out with him. You don't have to be perfect with him. All you got to do is avail yourself to him. And he'll do the rest. None of us are perfect. We just covered. Because <laughs> we've seen his hand. In our house. Who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I see him still coming from the balcony. I see him still coming. Somebody give God praise. Oh. Oh. And oh. Oh. coming church they still coming and your mercy Listen to me, your life is not going to change overnight, but Jesus is going to change you so you can go back and change your life. He's going to walk with you and talk with you. And the more you connect with the fellowship of believers, you get the word of God in your spirit. You get God's glory in your life. He'll start to make his presence known to you. Can I tell you something? There is no sinner Jesus cannot save. Whatever you've done, he's got grace on your life. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I don't know, church. I just feel like it's somebody else here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's time for you to turn in the right direction. Where are you? Come on. Come on. You've been going down the wrong road. And God has found you even going on the wrong road. All you got to do is turn now and open your heart to him. Let him save you. Who else is it? No shame. No shame. No judgment. Come on. Who else 
on, say, say, come on. I told y'all there was somebody else. Somebody give God praise. They coming from the balcony. I told y'all the Holy Spirit doesn't lie. Come on. They still coming. They still coming. Church, I said they still coming. Church, I said they still coming. to say about a whole family coming. See, y'all don't know how to see God. I didn't know they were coming. I just made room by faith. You missed all that. See, when you go fishing, you can't rush the fish. You got to sit there for a minute. Do I got any help here? I still believe it's more because God said God sent you here to give your life to the Lord and for you to be a part of this fellowship I got a brother still coming somebody give God glory who else is it who else is it
Hey y'all, y'all think I'm crazy and I don't care. Listen to me, listen to me, Shh. listen to me, listen to me. Acts 2 says, one man preached the gospel and 3,000 got saved. If one man can preach the gospel, and 3,000 people gave their lives to Christ. I believe God that nobody in this room will leave out of this room that's not saved without giving their lives to Christ. Hey, Reigns, 3,000 got saved. We have 41. We got some more to go. Hey church, it's 41 people up here. God is too big for us to limit him, Mike Holmes. He said, I'll do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. So guess what? I'm believing God for 50. Where them other nine at? They moving. Come on, come on, I see some moving. Who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me? I need to give my life to the Lord. Who else is it? Who else is it? Who else is it? I don't want you to leave out of this room. If you've never confessed Jesus Christ, this is your day. My sister's moving. My sister's moving. Who else is it? That says, Pastor, it's me. You know, church too long. Church ain't long enough to get souls. Uh-huh. 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 Uh huh. We have 45. We have 45. Who else is it? You've never given your life to Jesus Christ, but today is the day. Today is the day. No, today is the day. Today is the day. You heard from God today. Today is the day. Who else is it? it says, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm tired of living beneath my privilege. I'm tired of living beneath my privilege. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh-huh. Who else is it? Who else is it? You know they're going to talk about me, Pastor. Well, you, you can let them talk about you on your way to heaven. Because they're going to talk about you if you do something. They're going to talk about you if you don't do something. So you may as well do something. That's in your best interest. I see it. Uh-huh. That's 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. See, the God I serve, he does exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask a thing. Uh, where's, where's Brent? We, we, we ready? All right. Hey fellowship. Yes, sir. Hey fellowship. Yes, sir. 
We got some new passports to give out. Some new shipmates. Hey, listen. On behalf of Jesus Christ, welcome to the body of Christ. I'm so honored that you've made a decision to make Jesus your choice and to make this church the place where you worship. I want you to know you got to come back to church next Sunday and the Sunday after that and the Sunday after that because this is now your new place where you go and grow in God. I'm honored to serve as your pastor. Right behind you is Minister Richardson. Raise your hand, Minister Richardson. I want all of y'all, all, all of you, to follow him in the rear. They're going to take you through the plan of salvation and uh, get some stuff from you and bring you right back in the sanctuary. Hey, fellowship. Yeah. They're going to go to room five. Hey, hey y'all, y'all ever been on a cruise ship? You know when, they, when you go on a cruise ship, it's about 20 people waiting to welcome you on the cruise ship. We got about a thousand or more people waiting to welcome you. So when they walk back there, I want y'all to put them on the red carpet, okay? Okay, we ain't going to room five. I need y'all to figure this out. I don't need two different directions. For you. All right, we're going to the for you. Hey, put them on the red carpet. Let's go. Come on, put them on the red carpet. Hallelujah. Be seated if you can. Can somebody praise God for the word of God? when God sends a harvest of souls Charles souls still matter I said souls still matter ladies and gentlemen let's move forward wow it's giving time it's giving time ushers will you come forward at this time Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have two classrooms full of people viewing this on the, on the closed circuit. I want to give God praise for them that are in the classrooms. Come on, let's thank God for them. Amen. How good the Lord is that he would bless us in such a way that he has for his glory. Amen. 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 
If you are in need of an envelope, raise your hand. We've got ushers in the balcony and on the lower level that will come and bring you an envelope. If that is your choice to use one, keep your hand raised until they see you. Keep your hand raised until they see you. If you're using an envelope, I would ask that you will um, hold your envelope, place your tithe or offering in there, and hold it till you leave out of the sanctuary. You will deposit your um, envelope into the receptacles as you leave out of worship today. And we want to make sure that if it is your choice to use an envelope, you have one. All the rest of us on screen are six options. Those of you that are um, worshiping with us virtually, I would that you would follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And let's give uh, unto the Lord. Amen. How many of you think? that you got something to give. This is where we share our tithes and offerings. I'm so thankful that God has allowed me to pastor a church where we don't have to beg. Amen. Amen. We believe God and know that this is a part of worship where we share our 10% of our income to God. And he says that when we do it his way, he'll open windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing. We won't have room to receive it. He will rebuke the devourer for our sake and all nations are going to call us blessed. Amen, amen, amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts be pleased with what we not only have but the spirit in which we give it thank you for every person who is going to give now thank you for blessing us to have something to give and we give it to you cheerfully joyfully and thankfully and we thank you that as we give we'll see your hand in our house in Jesus' name, amen. Let's give unto the Lord now any of these six options that you choose. Let's do it for the glory of God. Let's do it for the glory of God. Would you thank God that you have something to give? <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, wow. I pray that the rest of this day will be a blessing for you. Let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, this coming Wednesday will be the homegoing celebration for our own Janine Fambro. Also, everybody hear me. Everybody hear me. Bible study will be canceled this coming Wednesday. All right? Everybody hear me. Bible study will be canceled. This coming Wednesday, uh, we'll be here celebrating um, the life of our sister, Janine Fambro. Amen. And again, again, to our women of worth, we urge you uh, to uh, oblige the announcement about our Kentucky Derby. Get your ticket now so that uh, we can prepare properly for that. To all of you who are our guests today. Thank you for coming to fellowship today. Everybody. Are, are Mr. and Mrs. Alfred Taylor here? Stan, Stan, Stan. Where are they at? He joined the church. Bless his heart. I want to give God praise for them. They got married on last Sunday. Amen. Amen. We praise God for you. We bid you God's speed and God's bliss in the days to come. Amen. Amen. I see another couple over here. I did your uh, stand. Stand. They got married, what, two weeks ago? Come on, show them some love. Yeah.
ebony, ivory, living in perfect harmony. <laughs> Come on, y'all, show up some love one more time. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Amen. We, are, we celebrate them and we bid God's grace on their marriage and that they'll have many years of bliss um, for the glory of God. All right. I pray that you were blessed this Easter. Enjoy the day with your families. Uh, those of you that are being baptized, I want to get them escorted out first. All of our baptism candidates, will you stand and follow Lady Dent? And they're going to get you guys taken care of. Come on, church. Let's thank God for our, all of our baptism candidates. Amen. 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 We baptize in a small church today. <laughs> Amen. If you're, playing, if you're getting baptized today, if you'll follow this crowd. Uh, if you may be in the balcony. Yeah, they coming down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a lot going on around here today. <laughs> Amen. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to give them a minute to kind of get where they're going. Let me thank our deacons, our security, our clergy, our youth ministry, our media team, uh, everybody, our first impressions ministry, our ground security, everybody that have undergirded this effort today of worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, everyone stand. Ain't she beautiful, y'all? What's your name? Marley. Marley. Miss Marley's going to dismiss us today. Dear God, thank you for giving us the chance to praise your name on this Easter Sunday. I pray that everyone makes it to where they are going safely and enjoys the rest of your day. Dear God, please help us to have a good week and always keep you first and trust in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.